Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the face refinement tool. This is a fantastic feature. However, it's only available in the studio version. So if you're running the free version, you can still follow along to this video, but you're going to get a watermark on your output. And just to say, I'm going to show you some real pro secrets in here. I'm going to show you some stuff that I don't think you would have seen on any other YouTube video. So stick with it and uh, let's go and take a look. So before we start, let's just add a new node, Alt S and go up to the open effects in here and there's a whole ton of open effects in here that we can use. They're all in different folders so if you just double click you can see the folders expand and in Resolve Effects Refine is where we'll find the face refinement tool. So I can just drag and drop that on but let me show you a quicker way of finding it. If you go up to the search here, if you just type in the first few letters of the effect you want, so it's face refine, there it is. There's a few effects that you might use on a regular basis. You can actually put them into a favorites. So let's say this lens flare, I can just click here on the start and that is now in my favorites folder. To bring up your favorites, click here, say favorites and you'll see face refinement is one of them. Drag and drop it on. So we're ready to go. Um, we've got our image here, it's got two faces in it. So first thing you have to do is to analyze the scene. So let's just press analyze. And before it goes off, it's actually saying to me which face do you want to analyze. So just click on which one you want. So let's do her and you just say analyze and you're off. And if we do the same thing on this shot, for example, add a node, add the face refine and go to analyze, you'll see that it actually analyzes straight away because the focus is on one face. This face is slightly out of focus. So one other tip, we did actually get a good track then, but let's just undo that. Had that not been a very good track, what you can actually do is zoom in. So if we go to here, and go to our input sizing and just zoom the image to a better position and what we can now do is reanalyze from here let's just go back to the beginning and because we're zoomed in Resolve has a better chance of tracking more accurately so we just bring this back down to normal size and you see that the track analysis has rescaled itself accordingly. And another good tip, just if you are having problems analyzing a region, there might be something distracting it. So what we can do is create a mask using a power window to eliminate that region from the analysis. And if I right click here and say add node, we can say add serial before. So I've now got a node before my face refine. And in here, I'm just gonna draw a shape, just a rough shape around the face and let's just track that. I'm going to track backwards because I'm at the end. Back to my window. Let's invert that window and if in the offset here, if we just take that down, what we're actually doing is taking everything else out of the vision and allowing Resolve to just focus on the face here. So then we can go back to here, reanalyze our image. Now the reason we're not seeing the overlay is because we're in window mode here. We're in the power window mode. So let me show you. If I just click here and go to open effects overlay, now we see the tracking data. So just a quick whiz through. Yep, so we're all good. So all we need to do now is delete the node that we put before and we're good to go. Now a really good tip when you're working with open effects that have a lot of menus is to work in a different view. But just before we do that, I want to open up the scopes. I just want to pop them out. So they're floating on top. And now to get into the best view, I'm gonna press Shift and F. And that gives us a full menu down here of all the tools available in the face refinement tool, a nice large screen to work with, and we can have our scopes sitting on top so we can analyze the image. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the scopes just for now. We don't need them just yet. So let's take the overlays off and have a look what's actually happening. So if I just mid-tone here, you see that that just affects a certain area. And that area is defined by this mask here. Okay, so let's have a look at that again. If I do color boost, and what's happening, I'm being extreme here just so we can see what's going on, but you'll see there's actually a line under her chin here. So let's reset that, go to the mask, and we want to just refine this a little bit. So we need to add some softness, and we need to adjust the size but as we start doing that, you'll see what's happening is we're introducing hair and other bits that we don't actually want included. In fact, if we take that off, you probably get away with the hair to be honest. But let me show you how to get rid of it anyway. 
So to do that, we need to create a power window around the hair. And the nice thing with the open effects is that you can have power windows sitting on top. So if I press Shift F to go back to our normal mode, let's grab a power window. And I'm just going to isolate her face. I'm going to put a little bit of softness on that, just a tiny bit. And obviously we've got to invert this because I'm trying to mask off the hair. And of course we need to track it. So just go to the tracker. Fantastic tracking as usual. We can go back to Shift F. And now if we adjust our midtones, you'll see that only the face is affected, not the hair. Power windows are really powerful on top of OFX for isolating. If you're doing things like lens flares and things like that, you can isolate the region of the flare just using simple power windows. And we can just fine tune these if we need to. Uh, we can go back into the tracking tool and get that more precise. So let's have a look at the actual controls. I'm going to just get rid of this window. If you come down here, you can choose what you're looking at. So I'm going to go to the open effects overlay. Let's have a look at the first area, which is texture. So texture is uh, the beauty tool basically inside the face refinement tool. Again, the beauty tool is still part of studio, so you can't do this on the free version. But Beauty Automatic is just a very quick, simple way of smoothing skin or making skin more coarse by simply moving this slider and the scale will be the amount that it does it by. Smoothing is just straight smoothing and you can adjust the detail size here and how much detail you want to bring back. Again, pretty straightforward stuff. But this one, Beauty Advanced, allows you to get into really good detail with this. So what we can do is start playing around with the detail of skin that we're looking at that we're going to affect by smoothing or coarsening. Now one easy way to look at this is using the highlight difference mode. So if you come up here and you say view highlight, you'll see there's one called highlight difference. And if I press this highlight tool here and go to highlight difference, oh, you have to press the tool again when you do that, and then start playing around with some of these settings, you'll see what I mean. So if I go to threshold, you'll see that as I move the slider, it shows me what is being affected. So it's a really easy way of defining the skin area that you want to be affected and how much. So the more defined this image is, the more is being included. So if I apply a little bit of smoothing and we've got a lot of detail in here, all that detail is being smoothed. So what I basically want is a very fine image here. So just play around with the lighting here. And we can go negative. So negative is obviously coarse. So I'm just being careful what I do. Being super subtle here. And you can actually put your mouse on these figures and move them. And this is only to give you an idea. So let's recover your mount or blend it back with the original. And if I take off the highlight now, there you can see what we've done. So if I switch it on and off. So it's very subtle. And that is the real secret to getting good, consistent looks out of the face refinement tool. You want to be really subtle in all these movements. And if you have the advanced panel, you can actually use the control knobs to adjust each of these parameters. So you can get really fine control. Okay, so let's have a look at the color grading section. I'm going to need my scopes for that. So Shift F, pop out my scopes, Shift F again. And let's just very quickly bring that back down so it's a bit smaller. We've got the scopes on top. And so before I do that, I just want to make some adjustments to the vector scope. Um, let's put the two times zoom on. And also, I want to work just in the mids. I, don't, I want to work where the skin tones are, so that's the mid section. And these are the mid, low and high is adjusted here. I did a whole episode on scopes not long ago, so I'll put a link to that in the description for you. So this is going to allow us to just measure the skin tone range. So we have our contrast control. We have mid-tone. So we can lighten the face very easily. Um, color boost, saturation, and I'm in fact going to desaturate this slightly. So I'm just going to put my mouse in here, move left and right. That gives me finer control. And take those midtones down a bit again. And the tint uh, to the left will move it towards green, and to the right will move it towards magenta. So let's have a look at our vector scope. And I'm looking at the skin line here just to see where we're sitting at. And it looks pretty spot on to me, but let's just adjust this anyway and see what happens. Yeah, so that way it's definitely going the wrong way, and that way it's going above the line. So we're good where we were. And the desaturate shadow will remove any color cast in the shadows in the face. 
And shine removal is quite good if I've got a bit of shine here. This is actually quite nice detailed shine, but you can remove it like so, or go the other way and it will in fact enhance it. I quite like it where it was. And so, so far we're looking like this. I'm gonna bring that mid-tone detail back to zero. Okay, then we're into the eye retouching. You need to be really careful here that you don't start making the image look too false, okay? These, these tools are really quite strong when you push them hard. Uh, you can see that it's breaking up a little bit already. If I go to my global blend and push that back, because at the minute we're on a half mix of the original face, then you'll be able to see a bit more what's going on. So there's eye light. So I like does this area here, but the eye retouching is really good if you use it carefully because it saves you drawing two power windows and then having to track each eye individually. So nice to put on, but just be really careful with it. And eye bag removal, if you must, I don't think she really needs it. Lip retouching, this is good. You've got hue here. So if someone's got a, a shade of lipstick that's not working for the shot, you can adjust that there quite easily. Blush retouching, forehead retouching. So you can do smoothing of the forehead here. Cheek retouching, chin retouching. You've got all these little tools here just to get your face looking exactly how you want it. Blend it back a little bit more. I think that eye is still looking too false there. So I'm just gonna knock that back a little bit more. And let's compare before and after. So there's before and there's after. Very subtle, but that's how I like to do it. So I've just realized that might actually be a little bit too subtle for you to see any real difference. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit more obvious. Let me just pull that blend back a bit. Uh, let's lift her eye light up a little bit more. Let's add a little bit more smoothing in there. And now before and after, so you can see the difference a little bit better. I'm gonna knock the blend back down a little bit more. So we're blending back to her original skin. And before and after, and that's the job done now. So I hope you picked up some tips in that episode. Keep it subtle, a little really does go a long way with the face refinement tool. And also note that if the face is moving too much either side, you might lose the track analysis. So you'll have to resort to regular power windows and just track those shapes. But either way, you're gonna get a great result. Leave me a comment. It's always nice to hear from you. I've had some great feedback on this series so far, so thank you very much for that. And I'm going to try and get this lined up now. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button, and have a look at my Facebook page as always, Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.